The Syrian nation has been witnessing death and destruction for two years now, as those who say they support freedom and democracy show more and more of their terroristic roots. Much of the Western world still remains silent. Syria of Bashar al-Assad and prior to this destructive plot was not a perfect Syria, but it was a country where Christians, Sunni Muslims, Shia Muslims and Alawites lived side by side in relative peace. They were neighbors, friends, and became relatives in many cases. And now where Christians could openly practice their religion with ease in Syria, the terrorists, supported by the United States, are now killing and beheading Christians. Those who were nationalists in the country were honored before. Now if they are caught, they are tortured, executed, and then even their bodies are disfigured by these so-called lovers of democracy. The Syrian military has always been respected in Syria. However, these terrorists not only kill the defenders of the country, but also cut open their bodies and eat their organs. How barbaric. These are the people that the United States want to run Syria? So unbelievable that even conservative American talk show host Glenn Beck has pointed out that there is something wrong with Washington's policies when these are the kind of people that the United States support. America, I, I, I am, I'm begging you, I'm begging you. We have to put down our partisan politics. We have to we stop. Have to stop. Have to stop. Have to stop. When Vladimir Putin is making the case to the American people, do you want to give guns? To the people who are eating the heart and liver out of their enemies, it's a no-brainer. We must stop the people in Washington. We've got to stop intervening in the wars in the Middle East. What can the United States and the United Kingdom gain from supporting individuals who have no respect for human life? and think that all other creatures are below them. Why would Washington or London or Paris want to encourage a terrorist group who kills and beheads Christians or eat the organs of their enemies? Since the path of death and destruction has taken place in Syria, we have seen crime after crime being committed. We have seen children being killed by bombs. We have seen schools and universities bombed and students killed. We have seen graves desecrated and the corpse taken out of the tomb. We have seen whole families being wiped out. We have seen the extensive destruction of whole towns which were in the hands of the terrorists. We have seen millions of proud Syrians losing their homes and becoming refugees in neighboring countries. And after all of this that we have seen, we have heard lie after lie about who is really committing the crimes and causing the death and destruction in Syria. As the Zionists control media entities from around the world continue to pump out their massive lies, our question to these media outlets are, what do you gain by creating lies against the realities on the ground in Syria? What do you gain? by ignoring the loss of life on the ground and the spilling of the blood by the terrorists. And to Washington, London, Paris, we ask what do you gain from supporting and promoting extremism and terrorism? What can be gained by supporting the inhumane? Is your hatred for the resistance that great that you would prefer this man in power? than to have an independent Syria, you support these people and condemn these people because your ultimate goal is for the world to be subservient to the Zionist entity. You fight and support the Syrian people on Tel Aviv's behalf and not even due to your own interests, whether you realize it or not. However, these terrorist acts are ultimately recorded under your name and you will have to pay a great price for these sadistic crimes for supporting those who behead Christians, Muslims of various sects and nationalists. It will backfire on you because spreading oppression and evil always works against you. It is only truth that will stand forever.
know that no matter the plots, the great Syrian nation will survive and the resistance will remain alive.